a few words on what you know what we are dubbing and what many people are categorizing as in, in a league of its own as far as the biggest fights in the history of the sport. That fight being none other than Habib Nurmagomedov and Conor McGregor. If you had a problem with how they put the fucking bus gate in the promo, if you had a problem with them putting that in the promo, you're probably the same person you're probably the same person that asks for a manager at Panera when one shade of lettuce isn't the same kind of green as the rest. Fuck off with that. You really expected them not to? Come on. You gotta understand one thing. You gotta understand something about when, when Conor McGregor fights, there are three things that come with it. Number one is the invasion of the casuals. People that have not seen a single fucking second of mixed martial arts for the entirety of a calendar year will we'll check Bleacher Report and look at Snowden's articles and look and see who and what and where it is at as far as the location on the card. They will not watch Lewis and Volkov. They will not watch St. Pru and Reyes. The invasion of the casuals will come in as soon as Conor McGregor and Habib Nurmagomedov make the walk. That's one of the three things that come with Conor McGregor fighting. One is the invasion of the casuals. Number two is obviously the money. Number three is controversy, whether you expect it to be good or bad. And in the case of what happened in April, it was very bad. But what I continuously saw and what I kind of echoed from my colleagues, what I write with and people that I listen to on podcasts alike is that what can you do in you fear the UFC and your biggest star just absolutely cataclysmically shit his pants as far as a, as far as his reputation is concerned and gives your and gives you a black eye because now not only is your biggest star in the headlines for the wrong reason this just delays his return even longer what do you do do you sit there pout cry shit your diaper and Act like there's no way you can come back for that? No. You make positive out of a negative. You get lemons, you make lemonade. And that's literally all what has bundled into the creating and dubbing of what many believe is going to be the biggest fight in UFC history. Again, I saved this for the end of this episode because I didn't want to go all in depth on it. We have like literally less than eight weeks to talk about it, but I do want to talk about the most important aspect of it and that being that this fight is for the belt, right? If there's a division that has had a long-standing debate of who is the real champ and who was stripped of interim belts of whether they fell and tripped over extension cords, you know, I, I hate to single out Tony Ferguson like that, but it's a rough life in that in that way, you know, and, and crowning a guy that just beat number ten in the world to get the belt that he, you know, had probably deserved for a long time. Uh, there are there are probably no more foggy title pictures in the past 365 days than there were at 155 pounds. And Conor McGregor's absence is large to it is large to thank for that. However, the UFC's lightweight title picture now has become incredibly simple. Maybe not so, I, I kind of worded my entry into that wrong because maybe not the title picture because if Khabib wins, if Khabib wins this fight, no matter how he wins it, no matter if he finishes him on the ground in 30 seconds or if he makes it a long, drawn-out torture fest, if Khabib wins, that is a separate avenue the UFC has to go because now they are moving forward with a Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor belt-less figure. Now, there are a lot of things you could do if Khabib wins. But on the, scape of the, on the scale of if Connor wins, and Connor's biggest rival 
and dance partner for the two biggest pay-per-views in the history of the sport, Nate Diaz, who fights almost a month to the day afterwards. Do you really think that the UFC is not already licking their chops, thinking that this could not be matching up more brilliantly? And here's why. I said this on my podcast last week when I talked about the Nate Diaz fight announcement. I want you to really, really think about it. And think about the era that we're in. Turn this fucking hat forward. Think about the era that we're in. We always talk about money fights. And, you know, I, I spoke earlier in, in abundance about how Rafael Asuncao on paper is clearly the deserving guy to get the next crack at TJ Dillashaw. But it would surprise a lot of us if that ended up coming to fruition. And with that being said, I see one outcome with three different scenarios out of a possible four. Because if Nate Diaz beats Dustin Poirier, I do not care what you say. I do not care what you think. I do not care if, I do not care if Dustin Poirier takes a fight on short notice a month later against Jesus Christ himself and knocks him out in five seconds. If Nate Diaz beats Dustin Poirier, on Mad at Madison Square Garden on November 3rd. Nate Diaz is getting a title shot. Watch. Does not matter if there's a Tony Ferguson sitting in front of him. Does not matter if it, it does it, it doesn't matter. If Nate Diaz takes out a guy in Dustin Poirier who is on a three-fight main event against former world champions, quote, whether you believe that Justin Gaethje's World Series of Fighting World Championship is meritable, that's up to you. Regardless, Anthony Pettis, former UFC lightweight champion, finished him. Justin Gaethje, one of the biggest nightmares in this entire division to fight, period, and was 18-1 and one at the time, finished him. Eddie Alvarez, former UFC lightweight champion, former Bellator lightweight champion, two-time Bellator lightweight champion, finished him. He's won seven of his last eight. The, uh, he's unbeaten in his last five. But he's only lost his two, he's won 10 of his last 12, I believe, off the top of my head. And those two losses in those 12 fights coming against rangy, long southpaws, like Nate Diaz. However, I'm not trying to go into the match above it, but if Nate Diaz can effectively storm the castle as vulgar as he likes, as nonchalantly and ever so basking in the aura of I don't give a fuckness that he carries and he takes out Dustin Poirier given the role Dustin Poirier is on, Nate Diaz is getting a title shot. You deal with it. I, I mean, they're not going to make Tony Khabib for a fifth time. And where this brings my point to a head and how I can wrap this in a bow and put it under the Christmas tree right here. Four scenarios. Connor win plus Nate win. Or no, 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 I'll save that for last. A Connor loss plus a Nate loss. Connor Nate three. McGregor Diaz three. A Connor loss plus a Nate win. I could still see Connor Diaz three. I could see Nate getting the title shot to fight Khabib too. But if for some reason, wherever or however, the UFC de decides to fuck themselves out of so much money uh, and they do something else, but probably try to make Khabib Ferguson for a fifth time for whatever reason. Um, I would likely see Connor losing plus Nate winning resulting Connor Diaz three. And for a guy like Nate Diaz, what do you think? Hey, Nate, shiny belt or Hey, Nate, lots of cash. Cash is going to be his choice of destination. And, and what, oh, I can't even imagine. Could you imagine Conor McGregor defeating Khabib and then a month later, if the odds were to hold right now, it would be an upset. Obviously, that line is, that line is gonna, that line is gonna move farther than the Polar Express. Or more, uh, I don't know about farther, but it, it's definitely not gonna sit at where Conor McGregor 
is right now. I think he's at plus 155. Uh, according to Bet Online, he is. Could you imagine Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz, when, what, what would both be upset wins to result in the creating of the biggest trilogy ever, of the biggest rivalry ever, piggybacking off the two current biggest pay-per-views in the sport ever, coming to a head settling the score in the trilogy finale once and for all with a belt on the line. That would be absolutely fucking insane. And if Connor wins and Nate wins, it's going to happen. Connor McGregor versus Nate Diaz three for the UFC lightweight title. Holy shit. That would be so insane. <sighs> I, the only scenario where, where that fight doesn't make sense, and again, we're not going to hold the UFC to a standard of make, never making fights that don't make sense, is if Connor beats Khabib, wins the belt, and Nate loses uh, to Dustin Poirier. And then, if that were to happen... Me, me in these scenarios. That creates three scenarios. Number one, Connor defends the 155 pound belt against the true number one contender. Yeah, uh, probably not happening. Uh, why would we, if Connor wins the belt, if Connor wins, do you think the first thing that's going to come out of everyone's mouth is, ooh, I can't wait to see who he defends the belt against and fights next? No. People are going to be like, fucking awesome. The lightweight division is back in a standstill because people would be correct to believe that he's not going to defend it. Option number one, Connor defends the 155 pound belt. Very unlikely. And this is all speaking if Connor wins and Nate loses. Number one, Connor defends the 155 pound belt. Not happening. Number two, Connor says, fuck the belt, I'm bigger than the belt, vacates and fights Nate anyways for the biggest payday and what would probably be a bigger fight than Connor and Khabib right now. Still, the trilogy, it's got to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to be the biggest fight ever. And if Connor were to win the belt and were to literally, he would usher in a new era by saying, fuck this belt, I want the most money, Nate Diaz is going to be what gives me that amount of money, I want to win, the, I want to not only settle the score, but I want... I've ar I already have settled the score. I want to be emergent as the winner in this. If there's one guy on the planet that has the power, the fortitude, the following, and the balls to say, fuck this belt, I don't want this belt. And it kind of makes sense while he says it, it's Conor McGregor. 